Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So another large bank in South Korea will provide cryptocurrency custody, guys. This is with regards to Wuri Financial Group. They're joining forces with Bitcoin exchange Coinplug to offer the service. So Wuri Financial Group, one of South Korea's largest banking companies, is getting into digital asset custody. According to a report in the Korea Economic Daily, the bank is setting up a custody joint venture with Coinplug, one of the earliest Bitcoin exchanges in South Korea, and a blockchain financial services provider. Coinplug will be the largest shareholder in the joint venture with Wuri Wuri Bank, uh, which will be the second largest shareholder, the report said. Custody allows Korean firms to invest in crypto without having to touch the asset themselves. So uh, to me, this is just more evidence that uh, around the world, institutional investors are getting into the Bitcoin game. I mean, we have been seeing it in the United States and in Europe, but now that we're seeing these big companies uh, merging together with, uh, you know, in this case, Coinplug, a Bitcoin exchange, we are seeing these kinds of partnerships. Uh, this is just pointing to the fact that more of these institutions do not want to be left behind when it comes to investing in Bitcoin. They are seeing that, uh, you know, right now is a very, very good opportunity to buy. In this morning's video, I did talk about uh, Lincoln Financial Capital and how they are also uh, placing a big bet on Bitcoin. Accumulating down in here, Bitcoin trading right now at the time of the recording of this video at about uh, $33,500. Great accumulation range. We have been seeing a lot of institutional investors accumulating their Bitcoin positions in and around here, not up here. When the market corrected 50 plus percent, this is when they decided to buy. Uh, meanwhile, you know, retail still very, very scared of this market, still thinking that, uh, you know, the bear market is just around the corner, that a collapse is imminent. So anyway, we got this update from South Korea. We've also got this guy's from Bondcrypt XRP, El Salvador, Bitcoin move could clog the network. Well, we already know how clogged the Bitcoin network can get, uh, even just uh, right now, you know, even just sending Bitcoin over the network. Today, we tend to see the transactions going through very slow. Well, according to JP Morgan, e-liquidity and increased volume from El Salvador adopting Bitcoin could strain the blockchain's network even further. And well, duh, I mean, it only makes sense. A team of analysts at JP Morgan have expressed concerns over increased pressure on Bitcoin's network caused by large scale adoption in El Salvador. El Salvador's dedication to Bitcoin could cause problems for the network, according to the team at JP Morgan. Bloomberg reported on a note the bank published Thursday. It highlights concerns over the Bitcoin network illiquidity. Over 90% of all coins have not moved in more than a year, with a significant and rising fraction held by wallets with light turnover, the report states. In addition, to the decreasing amount of coins able to provide liquidity, increased adoption in El Salvador could occupy a sizable chunk of existing transaction volume. Daily payment activity in El Salvador would represent about 4% of recent on-chain transaction volume and more than 1% of the total value of tokens which have been transferred between wallets in the past year. Uh, the report concludes by noting that decreased liquidity and increased day-to-day -day use could bring significant limitations on the Bitcoin network's potential as a medium of exchange. So uh, already seeing some potential problems with this. Uh, this article goes on to talk about uh, the Lightning Network and RSK and how uh, that's already seen some adoption through initiatives like Bitcoin Beach. Uh, so I will link the rest of this article in here if you guys are interested in reading the full thing. Wanted to thank Bondcrypt XRP for pointing that out. We've also got this guy's from Fintech Singapore. Thai regulators caution public that cryptocurrencies are not legal tender. So this theory of thought going the opposite way, not considering cryptocurrencies legal tender. This is coming from a national bank, namely the Bank of Thailand. They issued a statement saying that it has continuously monitored the developments in use cases of digital assets as some enterprises have recently begun soliciting payments in cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and Ethereum. The BOT has previously iterated that digital assets are not legal tender and doing so constitutes barter trade between the owner of the digital asset and the provider of goods and services where the payer and the receiver mutually accept all risks involved. So they are kind of wiping their hands of this if people do choose to use cryptocurrencies as a means of exchange. Uh, in using digital assets as a means of payment, both the payer and the receiver may face risks such as price volatility, cyber theft, and money laundering. BOT, or the Bank of Thailand, added that some digital assets are investment instruments uh, of which investors must understand the risks of holding. Uh, the regulators stress that it does not support the usage of digital assets as a means of payment for goods and services, a view that is consistent with many international organizations and regulators, such as the IMF, the BIS, uh, and the central banks of England and the European Union, South Korea, and Malaysia. 
So these guys are all getting on the same page here. Uh, you know, use our CBDCs. That is the only thing that is legal tender, or rather that is going to be the only thing uh, that these organizations consider legal tender. And uh, if you decide to use cryptocurrencies, well, you're kind of on your own. You might have a pleasant experience, but on the other hand, you know, if you do not experience something pleasant, it is on you. So the Bank of Thailand making that very, very clear here. Uh, of course, you know, they do not talk about specific cryptocurrencies, uh, but they do uh, outline Bitcoin. Of course, Bitcoin is in the news because of the El Salvador story. That's not to say, though, that they aren't using cryptocurrency for uh, a real world purpose, exchanging value from point A to point B, like in the case of XRP. And I know some people have been talking about, uh, you know, the possible relisting of XRP in the United States specifically. Well, the article I outlined yesterday uh, with regards to that huge transfer from one Coinbase wallet to another, I didn't bring up this point yesterday, but uh, Riz XRP pointed this out. By July 28th, XRP trading on Coinbase and other exchanges would resume. And so I know uh, a lot of people in the XRP community were wondering, is this true? Is this true? I mean, is it going to resume by July 28th? And, uh, you know, am I going to have an opportunity to uh, be able to trade my XRP with ease by that time? Well, uh, there are no official plans. Let me just read you a little bit of this down here. SEC has been set a deadline to offer crypto regulation plans. So uh, as you guys may remember, Elizabeth Warren sent an official letter to the head of the SEC, Gary Gensler. I did a video on that the other day. I'll link it up here if you guys didn't catch it. In the document, she stated that highly opaque and volatile cryptocurrencies uh, like Bitcoin as the leader pose growing risks on consumers and financial markets. Then Warren insisted that by July 28th, the SEC present her with uh, their official response to the plan to create and implement cryptocurrency regulation. And she uh, put, a, put a deadline on it. She said, I need to see this by July 28th. So this is what this July 28th date is. It was just Senator Warren uh, kind of giving uh, the SEC a deadline. I don't know who she thinks she is, but basically giving the SEC a deadline saying we need to have this done by this date. And this is what's getting people questioning if XRP will be relisted by uh, Coinbase, for example, in the United States. So nothing official. However, uh, you know, some of these news outlets are uh, just stating it as if it is fact by July 28th, XRP trading on Coinbase and other exchanges would resume. So good to read the whole thing. Good to understand the context with regards to this, guys. We are not seeing XRP uh, relisted on Coinbase for sure. I mean, yeah, I mean, it could happen, but uh, that's not saying that it will happen for certain. So uh, just wanted to bring this up, wanted to clarify this. Thanks so much to Riz XRP for uh, posting this because I'm sure a lot of other people in the XRP community are also wondering that. And I don't know if you guys caught this from CDL Crypto on Twitter, retweeting out Donald Trump's tweet. And this was on TV. I think this was just from yesterday. A news report from uh, BlackRock's CEO Fink urges World Bank IMF to overhaul for the green era. And you know what this is suggesting? So here's a quote from uh, from his statement. There is private capital that can be mobilized for the emerging markets, but we need to rethink the way the international financial institutions can support low carbon investments at scale. He said of the two organizations established 77 years ago in the waning days of World War II, we need a financing system that isn't built around bank balance sheets. Basically calling out the current system that uh, we are functioning in today and saying we need a new financial system, not saying what it's gonna be or should be, but essentially stating, look, the current system we have is a failure. And so what do you think is on his mind? Well, I'm gonna bring up this article, guys. It's from Bloomberg. So BlackRock's Think urges World Bank IMF to overhaul for the green era. So uh, I'm going to give you guys a little bit more detail about this. Chief Executive Officer Larry Fink told world leaders the World Bank and International Monetary Fund are outdated and require a total overhaul if they're to marshal the trillions of dollars in investment needed to bring sustainability to the developing world. Specifically, he called for a rethink of their role as financiers instead of lending money themselves to promote development and economic stability. The World Bank and IMF would be more useful in the transition to clean energy as issuers that reduce risk for private investors. Now, clean energy, we know with regards to uh, finance, for example, what runs on Ripple is definitely more environmentally friendly than anything running on uh, the Bitcoin blockchain, for example. Fink commented in prepared remarks to the Venice International Conference on Climate part of the weekend 
and meetings of the Group of 20 in Italy. Uh, and here's a quote, guys. There is private capital that can be mobilized for the emerging markets, but we need to rethink the way the international financial institutions can support low carbon investments at scale. And so this was the quote that was quoted from this uh, television news broadcast. A representative from the IMF declined to comment uh, and the World Bank didn't immediately respond to a request for comment, but Fink, arguably the world's most powerful investor, with about $9 trillion under management at New York-based BlackRock, used his speech largely to highlight what he considers flaws or risks in the approaches many countries are taking to reach net zero emissions. He flagged the unintended consequences of climate-related regulation on public companies and the potential for politically untenable $100 a barrel oil if fossil fuel demand doesn't slow fast enough. So he's got some very uh, poignant views on this. BlackRock has made a big bet on sustainable investing in the past two years and stands to benefit as more capital flows to environmentally friendly solutions. Now, this is talking about sustainable investing and how BlackRock has uh, specifically invested in these types of initiatives. But could it also be a possibility that BlackRock, even though they haven't stated it outright, have invested in perhaps the company Ripple, and more importantly, have invested in that cryptocurrency that will make this future a reality? Just one connection here that uh, I think I'd be remiss if I did not mention. This is Ripple's board of directors. Uh, as you guys can see here, Chris Larson right there at the top. If I scroll down here, you guys can see Craig Phillips is also part of Ripple's board of directors. He brings more than 35 years of private and public sector leadership experience to Ripple, having led senior roles at BlackRock, Morgan Stanley, and Credit Suisse. So he did uh, play a major role at BlackRock. Uh, just wanted to mention that connection because I did think it was important for this video. Guys, I wanted to bring your attention to this news clip. It was posted by Kevin Cage uh, back in April. This is Larry Fink, okay, the CEO of BlackRock, and he talks a little bit about cryptocurrency, and uh, Kevin Cage knows where it's at. When CEO of BlackRock explains Ripple XRP's use case in July of 2019, without saying it at all. So this interview was taken back in July of 2019. This is Larry Fink, the same person who came out with these statements here. So do you think he's invested in XRP? Well, listen for yourself. Um, you know, I, I was in Europe this past week. I had to buy a new briefcase because mine broke actually there. Um, when what, I was carrying cash? <laughs> <laughs> the launder? All jewels. Yeah, no. all right. um, and um, when I was going to sign the, the receipt uh, or the electronic yeah. Thing. They'd asked me, do I want to pay in euro or dollar? Yeah. And I said, okay, dollar. Then I looked at it. I'm still being charged a 3%. Terrible. Okay. Mm. So, and when you think about all the people who send money, you know, they may work in one country, send money back home. They generally do that through organizations that charge 5 to 10%. Yeah. There is a need, whether it's a Libra or something else, to democratize the exchange of foreign currencies. Today, with computers and electronic market, there shouldn't be that it should be 10 basis points, five right. basis right. points, that it's not sense. percent. And so I actually believe the idea around Libra, I don't think we need to create a new currency, but the technology to instantaneous uh, calibrate all the currencies, that should be done. Who gets squished by that? Who are the money, the oh. middleman who are making money on that? The banks. You know, we're making, uh, the, as the Bitcoiners would say, that, that's progress. For you, at least to get to the point where you're saying that about Libra, no, but you're still not saying that about Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin but, has, but even Bitcoin saying has blockchain. Bitcoin, Bitcoin well, I don't know is, if Libra is blockchain. They haven't decided. It, I might do it. It has to be some it's form not, of that. It's just ledger. I mean, right, it's just a, it's yeah. a basket of current of fiat currencies. It's like, you but you know, don't but the need that. Just keeping no track of it. There's no one here in value. But you don't need that. If you had this mechanism in every transaction, you could minimize the transaction cost. That's the whole idea, right? That's what the whole idea is. And that's what I loved about it. Yeah. I don't believe we need a, a, a international currency like that. There's no need. But there is a huge need to bring down the fees well, of too, the interchange. Need or not, it's, it's, it's here. And so it's not, the banks have not wanted to eat their own, like, to this cannibalize is, themselves. This is a but big when you see pressure like Libra, do they all get on board pretty quickly and say, okay, wait a second, I'm not going to lose my market share? No, right. There's going to be some mechanism of doing what I said, the calibration of currencies that's going between. That can just, I mean, you don't need a Libra. You get a, you have computers that can monetize and, and calibrate euro to dollar instantaneous for a couple of basis points right. or yen right. and all that. Well, Next time, come for the full hour. You're evolved. Booyah. So got to thank my man, Kevin Cage, for posting that. Again, this interview back from July of 2019, when the CEO of BlackRock, yes, Larry Fink, essentially describes XRP without calling it out by name. Which brings me to my next question. How much XRP does Larry Fink hold? If this is what he believes, put it down in the comments if you guys have an opinion, because I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments.
See you in the next one, guys.